I'm Lorna from Thread and Yarn and my channel is usually all about knitting, sewing and naturally dyeing my handmade wardrobe. This video today is something a little bit different. It's a special about the knitting retreat that I'm hosting here in Stroud in the west of the UK at the start of February from the Thursday the 6th to Sunday the 9th of February. So it's just going to be a cosy little video where I show you a bit where the retreat is being held, show you a bit about the shawl, which is the pattern we'll be knitting, and also show you some of the lovely yarn I've been dyeing <laughs> as little kits for the retreat. So I'm very excited to show you all of that and talk you through in a bit more detail about what we'll be doing at the retreat in February. So yeah, I hope it's interesting to those of you who are thinking of coming. And for those who aren't, I hope you enjoy this little cozy video anyway. So the theme of the knitting retreat in February is winter gathering. I think often when winter comes around, we are tired of being cold and it being dark and we just wanna get on with things and we're looking forward to spring. But actually, there's that part of winter that's really nourishing, I think, when you really embrace that the amount of time you get in those dark evenings can allow you to do some crafting, allow you to have some lovely, comforting, home-cooked food and spend time with your loved ones. So that's what's inspired us um, with the theme of this knitting retreat. I think it goes hand in hand with knitting perfectly <laughs> and I am super excited about it. So I'll tell you a little bit more. It's going to be in Stroud, which is in Gloucestershire in the west of the UK, and we're hosting it at a historic house in Stroud. My friend Lucia hosted the sewing retreat with me in May, which was delightful, and her house is absolutely perfect for it. It's a, a bit of a mix of, of different ages, but some of the oldest parts go back to the 17th century, and it's uh, part of an old manor house and it's beautiful. It's just absolutely opulent, I think is the best way to describe it. There's fireplaces everywhere, there's loads of comfy armchairs and little nooks to read in and to knit in, and it just felt like the perfect location for a knitting retreat and for really sort of sinking into that winter feeling. So we'll be knitting my briar shawl on the retreat, which I've put some pictures up of as well, but I thought I would show you a little bit about how you can wear the briar shawl and what it looks like. So it is a triangular shawl. There it is. And it has this asymmetric stitch pattern. So you are starting from this side and working up, which means that this direction is on the bias and it kind of drops down, which means it hugs your neck just beautifully. And I love the textured pattern. It was inspired by my love of walking through hedgerows and um, looking at all the briar plants. I also love the Detectorist main theme tune by Johnny Flynn, the briar, um, which, goes, which uh, sings about briars and brambles. So that really inspired this along with my bramble skirt. I've dyed it in my thicket wool which is a blend of Blue Flace Leicester and Gotland, which means it is just really cosy and warm. I find it very soft, but it does have a slight halo. And for that reason, I've chosen a slightly different yarn as well as a second option, which is my hedgerow yarn and has got a slight more of a twist. You can see if I compare it to the thicket. And there we go. And it's, uh, it's really, really, really soft. <laughs> so I knitted my sample in the, in the thicket yarn in this lovely walnut and madder colourway. So you can wear it traditionally like this. And I wore this at a market like this the other day, putting the textured part over and putting your shawl pin in there. You can also just keep it loose around your shoulders if you like. And I've worn it like this quite a bit as well, but you can wear it also as a scarf. Which is super cozy as well. <laughs> and 
And I think you should always make sure that your lovely textured work is here at the front. <laughs> so I'm so happy with the design. It came out as I hoped and um, it's just really wearable actually. I've worn it a lot. I worn it at the, to an event the other night. I wore it to the market and I just wear it when I want to be cosy in the house, which is nice. So I'll show you some of the colourways you can knit the, the shawl in. You can choose one of these when you check out for the retreat. You can also bring your own, that's absolutely fine. It's a double knitting weight and you need about 300 grams. So if I start with the thicket yarn, I will show you this one. This is a lighter version of what I'm wearing here. It's called Briar Rose. It's a warm brown base with a coppery tone over the top. It's a little bit darker than it's showing up on my camera, but it's very sort of coppery. Um, yeah, like a, a mid-brown with a rusty coppery tone to it. It's slightly different to the oak, which is just the warm brown. If you can see, there's a slight difference. This one has a coppery tone over the top. And this one is just a classic sort of mid-warm brown. Both lovely and squidgy and I think just beautiful natural colours. So there's also this one, which is a lovely deep gold. This one I've called Willow. Um, I've got a willow tree in my garden, <clears throat> which I've been weaving the mini wreaths with for the dried flower making and the colour of the drying wood really reminded me of this. So I've called this one Willow. And this is a golder tone and slightly more browny than this one, which is Catkin. And this one has a, <clears throat> a sort of, and this one has a sort of yellowy, olivey tone to it. You see the difference between them. This one I think would make a really, really stunning shawl. I might dice up more of this to make my second sample. <laughs> I think they're both lovely, but I do have a bit of a tendency to choose olive-toned things. <laughs> And the last thicket DK is Cobnut, which is, um, I was really happy when I, <laughs> found, when I thought of the name Cobnut because it just felt perfect to me. There's so many hazel trees um, in the thickets and in the hedgerows around here. And the Cobnut is a sort of light, warm brown. Um, the thicket as well is quite a heather john because the blend of fleeces. So you can see there is some um, variation in the colour, which I really love. That one I think is, is really, it makes a really beautiful neutral. So, oh, there's one more, I nearly forgot, um, of the Thicket yarn. And this one is stunning. It's really rich, deep colour. This one I've called Elder, after the colour of elderberries. And it is a sort of purpley, rusty colour. It's got a really warm toned sort of purple to it. And I think this one would be beautiful. I think they all would be because I've made them <laughs> in the colours that I feel passionately about. But these are the Thicket DK yarns that you can choose from. And I think they would all make a stunning shawl. I've also got some others in the hedgerow base. This one is Hawthorne. This is like a um, lilac-y, browny grey. And I really like this colour. I've got a moon set slipover in this colour and I was trying to recreate it in this one. And I think it would just have really show off the stitch work, I think, of this sort of lighter shade. And this... Uh, this hedgerow base has a lot more sort of drape than the thicket, which is probably a bit warmer, but this I think would look really beautiful and really show off your stitches. The other colour I've got at the moment is this. This is also called catkin, but it's not as bright as the thicket catkin. Dyed in the same way, but the base is slightly greyer. So just um, look out for that when you're buying, when you're choosing your yarn. <laughs> 
that's these two. I've got two other colours as well in the Hedgerow DK, which are currently outside drying. So I'll show you those, but they're not all skeined up and ready to show you here. This one is Buckthorn. It's a brown grey base, but it's got a warm pink, almost orangey tone to it. So it's much warmer than the Hawthorn shade. And then over here we have Blackthorn. I love the Blackthorn plant and I love picking sloes. I have lots of nice yarn for you to choose from. I thought I'd tell you some of the details. So it's going to be arriving in the afternoon of Thursday the 6th of February until about 4pm on the Sunday the 9th of February. So for those of you who would like to stay, Lucia has six beautiful spaces with accommodation, which I'll show you some clips of at the end. And we're also doing two uh, non-residential places for anybody who's local to Stroud who wants to drive to join us or walk, depending on where you are, <laughs> to join us um, for the daytime activities. So on the Thursday, for those with accommodation, It'll be arriving in the afternoon, settling in, and then having a cosy supper in the evening in the beautiful dining room. Um, and then you can make yourself at home by the fire in the living room or in your lovely comfy bedroom, whatever you prefer. And then on the Friday, I'm gonna be starting to show you a bit about the briar shawl pattern. And we'll be doing some guided workshops about the different textured stitches and knitting a swatch together with your yarn so you can practice. And I've designed the swatch so that you'll be left with a cute little um, table uh, decoration that, which you can use as like a, a knitted trivet or something to pop a candle on or just as a you know sweet little um, knitted piece of wall art. <laughs> so I think that's nice that you'll be able to use your swatch. And we'll be doing guided um, workshops as I said about the different textured stitches all at a lovely pace and um, then, oh, it's so cosy because it's a bit chilly today. <laughs> and um, then there'll be some knitting time for you to enjoy yourself, doing a bit of knitting, working on your swatch or casting on the shawl. There'll be a home cooked lunch and lots of knitting time in the afternoon. Or if you want to take a break from knitting, you can curl up with a book or whatever other craft brings you joy. <laughs> On Friday evening, you'll be free to explore Stroud, maybe try out one of the restaurants we'll recommend, or get um, cosy in a pub and hunker down next to a fire somewhere with your knitting. <laughs> and then on the Saturday, there's more knitting, <laughs> which I think is going to be great. And then on the Saturday, there's lots of knitting time, but we're going to break it up as well with a little ramble. There's beautiful countryside here in Stroud, we're nestled in the middle of five valleys, which I think means that wherever you are in Stroud, you always get an amazing view. And it just makes you feel really sort of held in the landscape, I think. So there's commons, there's forests and woods. There's so much, so many beautiful spots. You can see the seven from a lot of the different views. And uh, there's some lovely walks from Lucia's house. So we're gonna do a gentle guided ramble through the Cotswolds. There'll also be a non-rambling option or a wet weather option and a lovely lunch again and then there will be lots of knitting and relaxing time in the afternoon because on the Saturday evening we will be having a fibre folk storytelling event which I'm so excited about. There's a lovely lady who lives here in Stroud called Hannah and she's a professional storyteller and she's going to be telling us stories by the fireside that relate to our winter gathering and love of fibre art. So I'm so excited for that. I think the fibre folk folklore and storytelling element has sort of been a real passion of mine um, through the years, but also through my channel and, and sharing my content. I think it's such a natural place to tell stories and to talk um, and share experiences when you're all crafting together. So I think that would be wonderful. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> And then on the Sunday, we're going to have some more knitting time, but then we're also going to be working on a little mini dried flower wreath together. I've been growing lots of flowers to dry my garden. You can see some of them up here. And I've also been naturally dyeing 
different silk ribbons so that you can decorate your wreaths and so you can hang them with beautifully naturally dyed silk ribbon. It's lovely to have a floral display even in the winter and I think by the time it gets to you, that deep point of the winter is when the dry flowers are at their best, they're the most dry, they're perfect for arranging into little wreaths. I've been doing lots of weaving from the willow tree in my garden, making you all lots of little mini wreaths and I'll do a little tutorial on the Sunday and it's just going to be a bit of fun um, and you'll have a beautiful little mini wreath to take home with you and we can use some of these naturally dyed ribbons to hang them from. And I think it would just, it's an extra little bit of light in winter, I think, having dried flowers. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. I think that would be a really lovely thing for us to do together. So I hope you enjoy that. So that's Sunday. There'll be a lovely lunch again. And um, your afternoon is, is yours to relax um, before heading off on Sunday afternoon. So that's the yarn and that's roughly what we'll be doing together but I hope that you will join us, I hope that you will really like the sound of this cosy long weekend and uh, yeah I filmed a little bit of a video as well of the accommodation at the Cheers and the house where we will be hosting it so please enjoy that, have a cup of tea and if you would like <laughs> and enjoy the videos of Lucia's beautiful house. If you've got any questions at all about the retreat, then just send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope to see you there. I think it's going to be a wonderful, cosy, long weekend. Um, and I can't wait personally. Lucia and I have designed our perfect weekend together. So <laughs> I'm hoping that you will enjoy it as well. So enjoy and hopefully see you soon.